do you really know what's involved in how to make sustainable change or to how to really um, create a process of evolution in your life? You know, we talk about that. We talk about personal growth and, um, you know, tools to try to grow. But what does that really look like and how do we know if we're really doing it? I'm Brenda Florida, life coach and entrepreneur. And I had this really great experience that helped me understand better this process of evolution, this process of change and personal growth. And so I'm going to describe it this way. Whenever we actually grow, whenever we actually change how we're doing something, it's because we've taken ourselves up to like what I'll call our edge. So that edge of your comfort zone. And then you go just a little ways past that, right? So you're into that discomfort. Because if we don't move into discomfort, in one way or the other, we're really still playing around in our own comfort zone. So it can be easy sometimes to kid ourselves into thinking that we're making changes or we're doing things differently. But if it's not uncomfortable, I'd really question that. I'd really question whether or not, you know, I mean, you might be doing something technically a little bit differently, but is the motivation the same? You know, are you really um, creating a different result in your life. So this idea of transformation, of course, as a life coach, and even as an entrepreneur is so important to me because unless we're evolving, unless we're changing, unless we're growing, we are not moving into those higher expressions of ourselves. We won't be able to grow our business. We won't, it doesn't matter if you have a business or a job, you won't have the confidence to ask for a raise. You won't have the confidence to set a boundary in a relationship. You won't have a confidence, the confidence to leave a relationship that you need to be leaving because you haven't evolved to the point that you could really do it differently we're where we are in our jobs and our businesses and our relationships because of all the ways we've done it up to this point. So if we're really going to create something different in those arenas, we have to evolve into a new sort of version of ourselves. So here's how I realize this happens for me is that, so I go up against that edge and I get into the discomfort. Now, as soon as you're in the discomfort, you usually know because you start to have thoughts or feelings that are criticizing you or minimizing you or um, questioning your accomplishments or making you feel like maybe you're not worthy or you're not deserving or fear of failing. All those kinds of things are your mind and your body through emotions. It's the way it's trying to get you back into your comfort zone, right? It's just like, come here, come back over here where it feels better. Because our brains and our bodies are just, you know, that's, you know, as human beings, we are predisposed to seek comfort, not to seek those things that cause discomfort. So that's part of the problem, right? That's why it's easier to keep repeating a bad habit than to start a good habit, even if we know the good habit is so much better for us and the bad habit's terrible for us, you know, um, it's still really hard to do. And that's part of the reason why. So we've got to get into that discomfort. I've got to take myself farther than what I'm comfortable with. I experienced that this summer. I was on a retreat and part of the retreat was doing these sort of physical challenges. Well, the one was uh, like a trust fall, only you were falling into a big, um, uh, like a rubber eye, almost like a bouncy house, only it didn't bounce, right? Um, but so people weren't catching you. This big blow up thing was catching you, but you had to climb up pretty high and turn around, you know, and fall backwards. And um, that, no problem for me. Now, a lot of people were totally freaked out by that because they were afraid of heights or they were afraid of the fall part. Um, but to me, that was no problem because I'm thinking, well, obviously they designed this big, you know, rubber contraption with air in it um, to catch us when we fall. Like it's designed to, you know, withstand the weight and the pressure of somebody falling and whatever. So I trust the device and I'm not afraid of heights. I'm not particularly afraid of falling. So no problem. No sweat for me. But then the next one was this rock climbing wall. 
Oh, well now that totally psyched me out. So that was past my comfort zone. Now other people, you know, went up that with no problem at all, but they couldn't do the trust fall piece. So it doesn't matter what it is. Don't compare yourself to anyone. That does no good whatsoever. It's whatever for you is that rock wall, right? So I go past my comfort zone. I'm completely, I feel not exactly afraid, like I thought I would hurt myself, but I'm totally not at ease. I am in dis-ease, we could say. And I don't feel comfortable in my own skin anymore. I'm thinking about what other people are thinking as they watch me. I'm thinking how my body's not strong enough to do this climb. I'm just like all sorts of negative and critical things. I'm not athletic. I'm not good at this kind of thing. It's hot out here. It was Cancun in June. It was very hot. Um, you know, and so that's what happens. When we get into the discomfort zone where growth and all miracles and all magic happens, it feels shitty, okay? So if you're there and your life feels shitty today, <laughs> excellent, you're in the right spot because something has gotten you out of your comfort zone. And that's where all the growth is. That's where all the learning is. So I didn't get very far up the rock wall before I fell down. I mean, of course we were harnessed. I wasn't hurt or anything. And at the time, I was, it just fed my self-criticism. I'm, you know, I knew I couldn't do it. I'm no good at this kind of thing. Why is this part of this retreat? Blah, 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 you know. And then later when I looked back on it, I realized, wait a minute. Part of the process was I thought, yeah, but if I got to do it again, here's what I would do differently. I would have turned my foot this way. I would have, you know, whatever. And that's, so that was my like, aha, that's the moment. That's how you know you're growing because you, that, that discomfort of being outside your comfort zone and maybe you don't do it, you know, maybe you fail. I mean, all of us in business have failed. Everybody probably in a job has failed at some point in their job, whatever. The failure is not the problem. It's do I look at it and say, okay, wait a minute. If I were to do that again, here's what I would do differently. And then you're kind of rehearsing that in your mind. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Here's how I'd go do that differently. And then the next time something comes up that pushes you outside your comfort zone or you choose to go outside your comfort zone, then you're more prepared, even if it's not the exact same thing, even if I'm not climbing a, a rock wall, just the process of going through that, re-examining, rehearsing what I would do different will help me the next time I go to launch something in my business or whatever. Because everything in our life is interconnected. As we grow in one area, we grow in another, or it gives us a tool to implement in the other. So I want you to think about where you can push past your edge, get just past that edge of your comfort zone. You don't have to dive way off the deep end of it. Just go at least a little bit past. And no matter what happens, don't judge yourself. Don't criticize yourself like I did. So let me be the example of what not to do. Just notice it. Take it as feedback like, oh, well, yeah, that didn't work very well. And oh, yeah, you know, look at the way I psyched myself out. Oh, yeah. Here's what I need to change. You know, try to get yourself in a much more non-judgmental position. Um, even if you can't do it initially, do it as you look back on it. And you will, because as soon as we're in non-judgment, we can see all sorts of possibilities for what we could do differently. When we're in judgment, there's nothing to do. We're just going to fail. So why even try again? But when we can put ourselves in non-judgment, then we have the possibility of more answers, more resources, more creativity. I'm Brenda Florida, life coach and entrepreneur, and I hope that you will push yourself to your edge and a little ways past it and get yourself in that discomfort that goes along with growth and change. I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. Thanks for joining me today.